Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we are working on a 2016 BMW 228i with a convertible top and the com customer's concern is that they, they attempted to operate the convertible top and they would receive a message on the dash saying that the convertible top was not fully locked or something to that nature. I uh, All I did was bring it in, hook up the scan tool, I have not done my pre-scan yet. I just wanted to start fresh with you guys. I'll get the pre-scan started and um, start with attempting op operating the operation of this uh, convertible top. So here is the button that we are looking at. Oh, sorry, right there. If we push it up, let's see what happens. Nothing happens. No noise. No nothing. And push it down. Okay, so we have a message here saying, let me try it again. Trunk partition. Move trunk partition into lower position. So let's go ahead and do that. I am um, not going to lie, I'm fairly new to this uh, convertible stuff before coming to this shop. I had never touched a convertible top. <laughs> but it seems like they just don't stop coming in now. But anywho. We're looking at the trunk partition somewhere. Looks like we have some very simplistic instructions here. And like I said, I've never done this one before. I, I'm going to have to do some digging. Oh no, there you go. <laughs> Figured it couldn't have been that much. Technically, if the partition comes down and everything is clear we should be good to go but we will have to close close the trunk so let's go ahead and do that we have pulled the VIN we're gonna do an auto scan and then take it from there but let's attempt to oh okay so the scanner turned off the car um, I was about to say what <laughs> I forget that these newer cars, they uh, turn off the ignition for you. It's uh, reading control unit information. I don't want to kill the battery, so I'd rather keep the car on. I'm just going to wait till this is done, turn on the vehicle, and um, attempt to operate the, uh, the convertible top. So, so start up our vehicle, then we can hit diagnosis and auto scan. And while that goes on, Let's go ahead and attempt to operate this one more time. I'm going to push it down. We're going to keep an eye on the screens. Okay, so we have good operation so far. Okay. Retractable top malfunction. Manual opening and closing possible. C. Manual. So, yeah. Our scan is done. Let's go ahead and hit report. Now I know I'm a little probably a little too close to this. So looking at our report, first time I look at it with you guys too. So what you're seeing is what I'm seeing. We got a couple of things going on. Convertible soft top module is saying we have an intermittent code for uh, the, the switch off short circuit to ground or switch hanging. Functional limitation. functional limitation of tailgate open we have a permanent code though of convertible top compartment floor not lowered hmm I'm not sure what that means I'm gonna attempt to close it oh we have a new message retractable top not locked I'm gonna pull the switch up and see what it does it has no effect pushing it down no effect so we are locked out uh, out of the operation of the convertible top so we're gonna have to look into this see what that code means we may have no choice but to hook up ISTA to it and um, do a test plan even though I don't really care for test plans but sometimes we don't really have a choice um, 
Convertible top compartment floor not lowered. I'm going to do some digging see what exactly that means. Maybe it's not seeing the... Um, well, it can't be that partition because if it was that partition, it wouldn't. It would have given me the message again. So let's do some digging before we drive ourselves nuts, and um, I'll get right back to you guys. But before we do that, actually, <laughs> if this if this is anything like um, Audi convertible tops, you have to put it in a certain position before you can start all over again. Maybe this one might be the closed position. On Audis, it's the fully back retracted and closed position. Or fully open, depending on depending on how you how you want to see it. But we may have to lock this and start over in order for this thing to allow us to continue the operation of the convertible top. But either way, I want to look at some things just so that we could have an idea as to what we're looking at. Um, okay, if I hit the switch, it does show that it's open, closed. So, but we obviously obviously the switch is not an issue that's never was uh, a suspect we have a couple of things here just showing voltage supply if I hit open our relays aren't being closed or our pump is being uh, locked out let's, let's go to installation status why not okay Micro switches and Hall effect sensors. We have a bunch of Hall effect sensors, and we we have a Hall effect for soft top bow dead center, short circuit to ground. So that's something I definitely want to look into. I'm gonna take a picture of that in case I lose my data. But we see that our some are not active, some are active, but a short circuit to ground that that's not good for us. So let's see, uh, no fault. Okay, so it's it's showing that the luggage compartment partition in supply position shows on. So the partition is not an issue. That was just something that the customer did in order to fit more things into the trunk. That is not what we're looking at. But what the, the real thing that I'm having an issue with here is the short circuit to ground on the Hall Effect soft top bow dead center. Let's go ahead and look at some diagrams. Um, find out the location of this Hall effect sensor and hopefully maybe we can compare to another sensor and see a waveform and um, I you know, of course this is a BMW every car is different but on on an Audi they do have Hall effect sensors as well and they always have some kind of a square wave uh, pattern and that's how this thing can tell if it's short circuit it to ground because you, they're the module is not receiving a nice clean waveform and uh, when you actuate the convertible top and you move the sensor into that uh, another position it changes the amplitude of the signal but in any case it's not supposed to be shorted to ground there's no zero line or 12 volt or 5 volt whatever have what, what have you it's supposed to be a square wave pattern now whether it's supposed to be 0 to 12 volts, we don't know that yet. Uh, I've seen them be 0 to 5 volts. I've seen them be 0 to 12 volts. So we'll find out, and hopefully we'll be able to compare to a comparable sensor and uh, find out if this is internally shorted or if it is a wiring issue because that would cause a problem. The funny thing is that it actually starts to move. It doesn't block us out from the very beginning. If it was shorted to ground at all times, I would imagine it would block us from moving at all. And you guys saw that. It, it tried to move. Then it just locked us out. So something to keep in mind. I'm kind of thinking we have a bad sensor here. But let's not assume. Let's test and uh, see where, we're, where testing leads us. And hopefully we'll nail this sucker down. So full disclosure real quick. I just came out of the car and did a report again. And it took away my permanent code from being the top compartment floor not lowered from being permanent to intermittent so I believe that was the partition and our, we have a new perm permanent code now and it is hall sensor soft top bow released open circuit or short circuit and in live data we saw that it was short circuited to ground so the module doesn't know the difference between a short circuit to ground 
and an open circuit. All right, so we have our service info pulled up on all data according to the VIN number. And um, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can find any information on the location of this Hall Effect sensor. It is the one that we're looking for is the soft top bow released. So let's go here. First thing I like to do actually is look at TSBs. And I don't like to look at all new uh, TSBs. I like to put all TSBs because sometimes they'll, you know, leave some out. And I don't see anything other than noise and tensioning straps. So I'm not worried about those right now. Um, I do see an option for diagrams. I like to put the interactive non-OE ones. And uh, if I must, I'll use the OE ones. But for now, I won't. So I, as most of you know, I like the control uh, F feature, the find feature. And we could put released and see if we get lucky. Whoops, <laughs> realized, released, and we see something highlighted already. I keep double clicking, enhance. I'm going to make it nice and big so you guys can see this. Bow released soft top Hall Effect sensor. It is a two wire sensor and we have a red and brown. Let's come out a bit and we can see the other Hall Effect sensors here have brown on all of them but different colors uh, they have yellow let's see some other ones they all all the other ones have yellow for whatever reason that one seems to be the only one that's red so let's get out of the diagram we know we are looking for a red and brown wire to a sensor now we need to know the location of this sensor and i don't see an option for locations here so you'd be surprised how many times you see something in description and operation so it shows here 10 sensors for automatic soft top. Uh, it's explaining the functions of each one, but I don't see anything. That's, e that's everything right there. I don't see anything about location, so we'll keep going. Okay, I see a picture. That's good. Let's keep going. We see the frame. Okay, we see some more stuff. I'm going to hit... Control F, I love Control F. I mean, it, it saves so much time. Since release is already in there, I'm just gonna hit it again. Hit the down button and we see three options here. We see that item number 10 on this picture is our sensor. And if we look closely, we can see that number 10 is right here and it is pointing to the right rear corner of the convertible top system. So that is our sensor. Now I wonder where my module is because one of them has to be easier to get to. If it takes too much disassembly just to get to the sensor, it might, we might need to uh, talk to the customer and get some approvals for testing uh, plus disassembly. We don't want to you know, open that sucker up and then have this lady bail on the whole job. And you know that, that happens. So it's better to be upfront with the customer. Hey, we need to disassemble. We need to dig into this, and um, it may it may be easy access. It may not be. So that's that's the caveat. So so it looks like there's no easy way to get at this thing. To be honest with you, it's somewhere in this area. But at the very least, we could put this thing in like an emergency open type situation. So I want to lower all my windows and uh, turn off my ignition, keep my doors open. We're gonna open the trunk. Oh, I briefly glimpsed at the, uh, glanced at the uh, procedure. So there are these two buttons here. Pull those and leave them pulled. That one's pulled, we're gonna close the trunk. So what I couldn't show on camera, I had to put the camera down, was that you're going to pull back this forward portion, front portion of the convertible top while lifting the rear portion and then finally you'll have access to be able to open up this uh, door here. And I put two things to hold them open. And we're gonna see where our sensor lives. It's gonna be somewhere in this area. So this is where our sensor lives right 
there. <laughs> that little thing right there, that is our sensor. It is attached to a strut of some sort. And uh, by the looks of it, we might be able to remove this strut from here with everything intact. And actuate it and see if our signal changes. Now, it is pretty tight in there, so it may be a little difficult to actually get um, access to that wire, but we may have to figure that out anyway. I'm gonna see if I could just remove that little strut out from there and hopefully do some testing on this. All right, so we got the approval to dig deeper and we've got the ignition on and I am hooked up to my power wire and I, uh, I'm seeing 12 volts here, even though service information says that it's a ground and five volt supply to the uh, sensor. This is what I got when I'm connected to my 12 volt, uh, 12 volts, when I'm connected to my five volt supply, my red wire. So is service information wrong? What's going on with that? I'm going to put the camera down so you guys can see this, hopefully. And basically, I am going to leave this here. You guys are seeing that it's at 12 volts. We're going to keep an eye out for any changes. I'm going to move this strut and see if voltage changes. And we've got zero change to that waveform at all. So it's not supposed to be 12 volts according to service information. I'm gonna check my ground. Knowing that we have 12 volts at one wire, if we have lack of ground supply, I'm sorry that you guys can't see this, but I'm hooking up to my brown wire now. I don't think you guys can see this. If you do, it's pretty dark. I'm hooking up to my ground and it looks like we have two volts there. If we have lack of ground, we would have, um, we would see some kind of a floating ground on there. And two volts kind of makes me worry. But either way, I want to move this strut. Um, if there was no ground whatsoever, if I was to cut that wire, I would see 12 volts go through the sensor and come back to where I am hooked up. So we have some kind of ground there. And we do see a change. It went to full ground. I'm gonna see if I can hold this scope there while I move the strut back. This is not as easy as it looks. <laughs> okay, that was my fault. You see how it went up? Slightly. Let me see if I could uh, get it to go more. We have 12 volts there now. Is that my fault? Is, is it my ground? This is, this is what sucks about this kind of stuff. Always check your equipment, right? We are noisy. So I'm gonna try to move the, str uh, the, the strut, but I'm gonna try to leave everything else um, from moving, keep everything else from moving around. Oh, I'm not fully tightened. But for some reason, I'm getting a 12 volts there. I think we see our problem. Now, of course, I'm, I'm holding everything still, except for my wiring now at this point. And we have, we have noise, but when I move the whole thing, we've got 12 volts. So we may have a harness issue here. Yep. We have a lack of ground issue here. Now the question is, 
we saw a ground moving. Let's show you what I mean, right? We're going to move the strut and it went up. Comes back down. Comes up. Comes back down. So is is the my brown wire the signal wire? Because my 12 volt stayed the same. I'm going to check another sensor. From here I could see actually another sensor. Right there. I'm going to check that one out. We're going to do the same testing right here. Let's go uh set it up over there. I need to know whether service information is wrong or just outright right lying or something else is amiss. So we are on this side now. I'm going to ground where I grounded on the other side, same place. And I'm, uh, I'm going to assume that my brown wire is the ground. Uh, if, I, if I remember correctly, looking at the wiring diagram, we had red and brown, red and brown, yellow and brown. And that was, the brown was always ground. So I'm going to check my yellow first. yellow so my yellow shows 12 volts right I'm gonna wiggle everything make sure my equipment is good absolutely good I'm wiggling absolutely everything I mean everything right Let's check the brown wire. That is, hold on, I still have to do another test and the camera's in the way. Um, I need to move this door because I have the Hall Effect sensors right there and it's using this little metal tab to read that. I want to see what happens when I open and close this door. But, you know what, I'm leaving the camera there. And I'm just going to close that right there. And of course it's not that easy because I have stuff holding up other stuff and it's just a mess right now. But anyway. The tab is away from the Hall Effect sensor. The tab is over the Hall Effect sensor. And I'm seeing no changes. Right? So I'm going to hold this up again. Man. I'm really going through a mission. <laughs> this is not supposed to be this difficult. But anywho, I am going to check my brown wire now. And if it's anything like our suspect sensor, then our ground will change along with the position of the door. So my ground came off. Let me hook up my ground. I'm going to remove this and put it on our brown wire and it is slightly elevated it's not a perfect zero but anywho it moves with the door with the door position so then that means our brown wire is the signal service information is full of it and we have a harness issue I'm gonna go back I'm gonna go back to our suspects uh, sensor and see what we saw there because it's kind of easier now that we know that our, our equipment is hundred percent good continuity we can go back and see Mind you, this is the first time I ever touch one of these um, convertible systems on a BMW. So please bear with me.
So, where were we? We're gonna ground our scope. We're gonna put our scope right there so you guys could kind of see it off the edge of your screen. I'm going to check my power supply one more time, my red wire. I know my equipment is good. I'm going to wiggle. My power supply is dropping out and I know for a fact that my equipment is good. We just tested it. Yep, we have a harness issue here. I'm going to check my ground side. My ground side is only a result of a crappy supply. It's all over the place. It wants to be ground sometimes and then it wants to be positive sometimes. Alright, so we got the approval to change out the harness. We actually ordered the sensor and it came with a long wire. It looks like this may be a very common issue. Who knows? Maybe it'll be down the road, but here you can see where we cut the wire of the old sensor and we just left it there. I will be um, isolating those. But either way, we're going to cut it at the other end so there will be nothing coming out of there. Ran the wire with pretty decent slack right here. And up to over here, you can see it. I'm going to go past the firewall. And I, I think I'm going to just go all the way to down to the module. I don't see what's the point of doing it halfway at this point. All right, fellas, to conclude this video, we have the confirmed fixed. I went ahead and tried it out, um, putting it all the way back, and I didn't get a message. And, well, as you guys saw before, I'm pretty sure I filmed it. Uh, this has been a couple days. The convertible top would stop its movement. So I went all the way back, and I got no message on the board. And But before we <sighs> confirm, show all that, just to show the the wiring i know people are gonna give me crap about bare wires but i mean look next to it look down there it's bare wires everywhere but we went all the way up to the module so i didn't want to take any chances there with all the flexing and all that stuff so it's crazy because it only has forty thousand miles and it's already have it already has a harness damage so that's that's nuts but anywho i'm gonna hit this button i believe upward is to close it and we'll go ahead and show the whole process. Oh yes. Retractable top movement complete. Nothing on the dash. This is a confirmed fix. But of course, we have to go all the way back and make sure it shows everything I needed to show anyway. So we're opening this sucker up, make sure that there's no message at the end of this travel and that it shows movement complete. So let's just get that one out of the way. Retractable top movement complete. No further warnings or messages. That is a fix. And uh, yeah, this may be a very common thing. It, it sure is for Audis, like especially that right rear sensor. It's becoming a thing. It's definitely different in the sense that the sensor um, on these is uh, zero to like two volt <laughs> square wave. I mean wave. I mean voltage because of the way it's designed. But on Audis, it's uh, it's on the supply. It's on the it's a five volt, and, and it changes the pulse width. So. It's a 5 volt square wave and it changes the pulse width, so it's crazy. Um, every car is different. You can't uh, assume that one is like the other. Some of them use current. You know, they don't, the voltage will stay the same and you'll see a difference in current or whatnot. Um, I've seen that on Jaguars. But, anywho, uh, service information is pretty important here, but at the same time, service information let us down. I will post the service info that I am referring to that said that it was a 5 volt supply when it really was a 12 volt supply and that the signal wire it was the only difference we saw was on the ground side on a good sensor and on a bad sensor so 
uh, and for those of you who are worrying about the two wires that I pierced over here I will be sealing those up <laughs> not to worry so I, I, that's all I can say about that I appreciate you all for sticking around if you made it this long and um, be sure to tune in next time uh, leave a comment hit like subscribe if you haven't already and uh, till next time